Hello, everyone, and welcome to the e Egyptian Update program. Um, my name is Ash Sadiq, and I'm here with uh, Nancy Zaid, as well as with um, uh, Seher. Uh, and our goal tonight is to really share with you uh, an update on the situation in Egypt. Take a look also at some of the factors affecting the situation um, uh, the political situation in Egypt today, and then also think about how that affects the American-Egyptian relationship and um, uh, see where the discussion will take us. But we really hope that at the very end that you'll get a good sense of the current situation in Egypt and how that affects the relationship with the U.S. as well. So let me start with Seher here. And um, Seher, if you don't mind sharing with us what you believe is the current situation in Egypt, and if you can link that back to what started back in January 2011. If we go back to January 11, that is normal reaction uh, for a good number of population after have same ruler for a long time, like 30 years or so. Any ruler will be in power for a long time. He convert to be dictatorial. And it's not thinking about the country, start thinking about himself and his family. And he don't care about these things. So this, in September, in uh, January 11, uh, sorry, January 25th, 2011, it was uh, some kind of riots, just complaining about cost of living getting high, source of food getting less, and these people like to live a decent life. That's the main intent for all these riots. But after a while, it's converted to some political or religion directions and ended by uh, some kind of election. I don't know how to describe it, but it was election. Mm -hmm. And uh, they came up with uh, Morsi in power. If it is uh, fair and clean or not, I don't know. So he became in power. When he became of power, he converted everything to be more of a religion attitude, uh, supporting only his groups. And uh, I hate to say his family only, and uh, care about uh, personal and group things. And he showed in many occasions non-loyalty to Egypt. Mm -hmm. So it is not, I think, the, the dream of everybody there. So after one year from his election, uh, start to be nothing got improved. Everything went worse. So it needs another correction for what happened. So actually, what happened in June 30, it was correction for the path of the same revolution. But since. Egyptian uh, constitution or government or laws don't have recall system. So the public decided to make their own recall mm -hmm. in their own way, as I call it, recall in the Egyptian way. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> if you go to the Russian satellite and they count the heads in the streets, it came to be 33 millions. If you go to the American satellite, it says 31.5 million persons on the streets making rats, disagreeing about what's happening with the government. And they want uh, civilian government out of religion. And they want freedom. They want a lot of things that they already lost during the previous period. Mm -hmm. So uh, he never showed, as I can see, any cooperation or feeling about the real demand or the need of these people. So uh, since the army is part of the Shah, uh, start from, uh, sorry, the army part of the people, and the army from the people to serve the people. So it was a motion from the army to use the muscle, which is the army is the muscle of the public, mm -hmm. to correct the path. Mm -hmm. So it is not a coup, uh, and I hate to say it is a revolution. I like to say it is recall. Mm -hmm. They call him back and the Golitas go again to make everything in a constitutional right way as uh, the world knows it, not something part of anarchy and part of special interest and things like this. Yeah. Well, let, let's thank you very much for, for sharing that. And Nancy, maybe you can also sort of share your own view, very much like what Sarah has done now. 
do you see eye to eye? Do you see it differently? What are your thoughts? Again, if you, if you help the audience understand what really happened and why back in 2011, and where are we today? I think, I think Mr. Seher gave the uh, uh, broad brushstrokes of what mm -hmm. happened. Yeah. Uh, January, uh, January 25th, uh, 2011 was a revolution and the intent of the revolution was not to bring down the country it was really to bring down uh, to to um, uh, register uh, the a popular complaint and and the demands and the demands were uh, decent living social justice and uh, freedom so these were the original demands um, Everybody took to the streets, and everybody really, you know, at a certain point, people never thought that it would happen at all. Yes. Uh, and they were surprised that it did, and they got encouraged, and they went down, my family included, by the way, uh, and they were on the streets there protesting, um, and there was no such thing as religious uh, affiliations yes. or political affiliations or nothing. It was literally just the people you know, registering what they needed. Uh, and when the army stepped in, in what, by the way, is also described as a coup, just, just, just so we know, back yes. then in January 25th, 2011, yes. uh, when the army stepped in and uh, ex-president uh, Mubarak uh, stepped down, uh, everybody got um, hopeful, everybody was happy, everybody rejoiced, and that's when the polarization and the politicization of that revolution started taking place. Um, you started hearing uh, the seculars, and then you started hearing their religious uh, voice. There were no religious demands. As a matter of fact, under the old constitution, it really never uh, uh, put an end or it never hindered mm -hmm. the proliferation of uh, religious freedom and religious thought. Uh, so from that point on, um, now the uh, political is Islamists are uh, have have been in the street, you know, have worked on uh, at a street level for a long time, mm -hmm. and they have always been the typical underdog. They've always represented a framework for effective opposition, as opposed to just um, um, ineffective op uh, uh, civilian opposition yes. that was then. Uh, and uh, so people, you know, believed in it. And, and I, I think Mr. Sauer would agree that Egyptian people generally, whether Christians or Muslims, are religious by nature. So they look at religious uh, clerics and religious figures as people who are far from being corrupt, mm -hmm. people that will actually take the country forward, a country that has been suffering from uh, amazing levels of corruption. Yeah. Um, so, uh, rightfully so, there was uh, um, an, an election. It was largely, you know, I mean, it was, it's a fair election. It was a fair election. And uh, the Muslim Brotherhood uh, uh, took or, or, you know, won. Uh, and then there was like the uh, presidential elections. There were multiple, I think it was 13 uh, candidates or pre presidential candidates. and. I just want to stop here and explain or at least register the fact that we see at that point the inexperience of an entire population, population. Of, um, um, with the political process, their unawareness of political process. Mm -hmm. they, they, they don't know what it, they're supposed to do, but they want to do it the right way. So they went and, and, and uh, they actually uh, cast their votes in you know, uh, you see that the seculars or the civilian, because secular is another word that right. we might want to exactly, yeah. <laughs> uh, talk about. Exactly. Uh, we see that they are not as organized, they are not as effective, but when you talk to the people in the street, they think that the religious forces will actually involve the, the, the secular thought. Yes. Okay? But anyway, be that as it may, uh, we know what happened. Morsi uh, won. Uh, and, as well as the Muslim Brotherhood, and uh, to everybody's surprise, the Salafi mo uh, movement, which is an ultra uh, conservative uh, Islamic movement, political movement. Yes. And 
people looked at or waited for the change and the disappointment started. Now, uh, it's not like the Egyptian people knew that everything can, you know, that was ruined with, throughout 30 years can be fixed overnight or in a year or two. Right. But it, they were looking for the proper foundation, mm -hmm. the proper frameworks, comprehensive frameworks for a, a healthy political system. Yeah. And that generally starts with the Constitution. Um, so people waited for that. Uh, and uh, it was a huge shock to everybody yes. uh, on November 21st of uh, 2012 when uh, Morsi declared himself as above the Constitution as well as, you know, as, and, and that his re uh, decisions or laws cannot even be taken to court. Mm -hmm. And that's when the strife really heightened. Mm -hmm. And that's when people realized that um, that's, you know, that's not what was advertised. Yes. That's a false advertising, if you will. Exactly. Uh, and then, you know, uh, the, the secular or the civilian, the non-political, let's say, the non-religious political forces uh, tried uh, very often and very hard mm -hmm. to get included in the process. But unfortunately, uh, the Islamic or political forces were not as inclusive as one would have ho hoped. Yes. And that led to more and more heightening of, of dismay. And given the fact that uh, the Constitution that unfortunately did not recognize the, the uh, uh, churches of Egypt and the, the civilian uh, forces that actually you know, decided to leave the table because it, the Constitution was just not for all of Egypt. Um, it, you know, uh, it, it just, it, it became a non-inclusive uh, system yeah. and environment. Exactly. <clears throat> uh, and that constitution defined no instrument for the people to uh, recall a president, except in the presence of a parliament, and there was no parliament at that time. Right. Or if the actual contested president would decide to go through an early election, which he refused, Mr. Morsi Correct. refused as well. Uh, so at that point, and given that, in Egypt there is no Second Amendment, right? Right. You know, exactly. so they don't have an instrument to recall uh, the uh, the government or the president, and they don't have the right to bear arms. And Egyptian culture itself, mm -hmm. they don't believe in in, in bearing of arms. Their um, they turn to the to their arms, which is the armed forces, the armed forces yeah. which behaved exactly the way that it did with Mubarak. And that was the corrective uh, path. Yeah. path for the January 25th revolution. And, and, and I think that's uh, maybe a bit more detailed. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, I, well, I thank you for that introduction. And I think you know, we'll continue to, uh, to stay on, on, on the political environment in Egypt uh, discussion. And I'll look at, at Seher to tell us, in, in your own view, Seher, if you were to draw a new political system in Egypt, given the fact that you represent the Coptic side of Egypt, and as an Egyptian and also as an American looking at the situation today, how would you draw uh, a new political environment in Egypt? What should that environment look like in your mind? Before we talk about human rights, i like to ask a question. <laughs> in the Egyptian idea, Always it's a religion, Christian, Muslim. Mm -hmm. What's the function of this line other than discriminatory function? Absolutely. For both sides, I'm not talking about one side. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Okay, so this line is not needed. And in the Constitution, yes, the religion can be guide the Constitution. I have no problem with this. But uh, the country itself never have a religion. The country always open for many religions. Mm -hmm. As uh, Salah Jaheen, which is an uh, old journalist, mentioned in the 60s and 70s, write in my ID, Egyptian, and I will pray wherever I want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is, it was actually a nice thing to, to hear it, that all is equal. For the last, uh, in the 60s and the 70s, it was very hard to distinguish Mm -hmm. between Christian and Muslim. Yes. Very hard, because both of them was the same fabric. 
blended together. Under last couple of years, things start to be distinguished. And uh, they try to treat some people as second degree citizens, which is not acceptable in any way, not acceptable even for Muslims themselves. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, even between Muslims themselves, it was class A and the class B and the class C. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Equalities disappeared. Correct. Uh, <clears throat> so that's part hard. So the Constitution should implement some equality for all these people. Mm -hmm. And uh, both of us has to be equal under the law, mm -hmm. if it is Muslim or Christian. Exactly. Uh, for the same crime, same punishment. Mm -hmm. It's not somebody above or somebody below. No. All right. So things like this. To, Make this kind of things as structured to be country, it is very hard, it may take a long time. Mm -hmm. Because we have a good number of younger people, they got the wrong education. It is very hard to wash it, mm -hmm. but it may take some time. Yes. It's washable, it is not something you cannot do, it can be done. But what the government will do, I think the government now going in the right way. But to solve or to take your right by crime, I completely disagree with the terrorist. Mm -hmm. And some they try to force their way, it is not Islamic way, but their way by weapons, by guns. Mm -hmm. It's not acceptable. Mm -hmm. Not acceptable for all parties, except themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So this thing is, is going to different uh, path. So constitution, I hope to be at the end clean one, well done. Uh, the laws should be more equal. And uh, you mentioned the word uh, Coptic. Yes. <laughs> OK, uh, somehow people understand Coptic means uh, Christian. But actually, Coptic is coming from Kipti, Gipti, Egypti. So both Egyptians. Yes. And Kyoptis. <laughs> in, in the, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so there is Coptic Christian and there is Coptic Muslim. Yes. Other than these two Coptics, they are foreigners. Yes. Coming from another country, mm -hmm. which welcome, no problem. They can yes. live with us. Mm -hmm. But the main fabric is these two Coptic groups. Yes. So thank you, thank you for sharing that, Nancy. We're, we're going to a break in, in in a couple of minutes. So maybe before we go away. Again, give me your ideal view on what the political environment in Egypt should look like going forward. And after the break, we'll come back and take a look at your view as to how it exists today. Okay. So. Uh, well, there is a political system in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And it actually has a legislative branch and a uh, presidential or executive branch and a judiciary as well. So the system is there. It's just the system is ineffective mm -hmm. because the instruments of the system are fundamentally lacking. Mm -hmm. And and therefore, the, 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 the stage and the phase that the country is in right now is the building of the fundamentals and the building of these frameworks in yes. order for the political system, the pre-existing political system, to actually become effective. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. So what, I, what I'd like to do is, you know, once we come back from the break, we want to delve a little bit deeper into uh, these elements, especially whether or not we see things really improving. Mm -hmm. So with that, uh, we'll take a short break and we'll be, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Egyptian Update. I'm here with uh, Nancy Zaid and also with Seher Yasa. And uh, right before the break, we were basically discussing uh, the political frameworks that exist today in Egypt. And I want to go back to Nancy and really have her describe to us what are the political powers that exist today in Egypt and what could be the systemic issue with those powers at this moment with a view to the future. It, it's complex, <laughs> but uh, largely you would say that there is uh, the political or the Islamic political force and that is divided into uh, the Muslim Brotherhood and into the Salafis. Uh, then you have your civilian forces and this is basically 
people that instigate or people that started the, the, the January 25th revolution and continued on with, uh, with the uh, June 30th of 2013, the corrective um, uh, revolutionary wave. Yes. Uh, and then uh, you had, and, uh, okay, you can say that the Islamic political forces are kind of like the conservative ones. Uh, but um, maybe Republicans, if you will, yes. uh, if, if we have to compare to Use the, the, the environment. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, and you have the Democrats uh, there, and those are the liberal forces, and they are a group of socialists and um, um, uh, capitalists and uh, um, liberals and seculars and, and, yes. and all that. And those would comprise the, the educated and the uh, 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 forward thinking uh, 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 forces, political forces. Yes. And then um, you have the unaware, okay? And unaware, those are, uh, you know, I would like to compare them to the undecided, yes. you know, here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then the, I decided, the undecided no Correct. here in the U.S. They They're know. They're just choosing not and to they, take action. Exactly. Yeah. And they kind of, you know, wait till the very, uh, to, you know, the 11th hour before they actually act. Yes. Uh, but in Egypt, because there has been no political life, no viable political life, yes. that the majority of, of the Egyptian people are unaware mm -hmm. slash undecided. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't take part. So those are basically the political forces uh, that, that uh, comprise the eco, part of the ecosystem, the political ecosystem in Egypt. Yes. Now, I know that during Mubarak's time, pretty much the existence of the Nationalist Party that the whole Mubarak mm -hmm. group really represented, more or less by design, they did not give any of the other civilian parties the mm -hmm. chance to really flourish and have almost sort of a balancing um, of powers mm -hmm. composition in the parliament or, or any of the uh, cabinet positions, which creates the situation that you are in here, that you are in today, with the fact that with the revolution, all these Islamist uh, uh, parties and groups have basically sort of in full force used the umbrella of the religion to basically tell mm -hmm. those who are uh, uninformed or perhaps informed mainly mm -hmm. from religious mm -hmm. institutions to believe that it's by supporting these these religious uh, parties uh, that that's is the right the right way to go, and that's really where brought what brought the MB into power. Mm -hmm. They basically came on a ticket of uh, uh, based on, on religious sort of appearances, and then of course the situation when the um, um, uh, the Egyptian people were put through when the presidential elections came down to a Mubarak era figure and Morsi, the revolutionaries voted for Morsi mm -hmm. to 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 put him into power unbeknownst to them that once he's in power, he's really going to put all their aspirations aside. Now, a lot of the demonstrations that are happening today, a lot of people in the demonstrations are basically saying, we are here to bring back the revolution. And once again, they're talking in, on the, in the language of the Egyptian people. What's your reaction to that picture? And do you see any activity on the Egyptian scene to really create a balance of powers? Because now we have the army, and of course, most probably, a lot of the Mubarak era forces at play today, mm -hmm. more or less really recreating the situation that existed prior to January 25th, 2011. So that's the question I have for you. I wonder how, how you see things evolving from there. Um. Revolutions never take a straight path, mm -hmm. you know, to uh, the, you, to fulfillment or to success. Yes. So they always go um, in ups and downs, and right now uh, the, there is a, a serious uh, attempt on part of uh, the army or the military and uh, some civilian forces to actually implement the correction. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that it is effective just yet because, again, I mean, it takes 
a lot of people. It takes a society to yes. actually make that happen. Make the change. So At least that is the intent of the majority. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. It, yeah. It, takes, it, it, it takes a society to actually make it happen. Yes. But then let me take you back what we just said you know, a little while earlier, yes. which is that throughout 30 years, there was no uh, political life to speak up at all. Right. Uh, as a matter of fact, basically what you can say that the 1971 Constitution uh, gave uh, um, immense power to the uh, executive the, branch. The president, mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah. and you know, it's like uh, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Yes. And that's what we saw. Mm -hmm. So, yes, people want to create a political sense and take part in it, they just don't know how. Yes. So now the look is at the educated and the revolutionary forces and so on and so forth. Yeah. But even so, they are not that ready to, to move forward. So. The progress is is there. Maybe it's not as fast as the entire nation wants it to be, but that's I think the reality. It's very hard. Of yeah. to be it's fast very to hard. Be. Yes, yeah. it's gonna. It's a learning process mm -hmm. that that everyone will have to go through. Yeah. But yeah. you're right. Yeah. There is significant attempts, or there are significant attempts, to recreate uh, the the the. Previous regime, yes, and 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 people, you know, sociology tells us that people fear change. Correct. So sometimes even people that want the country to move forward, mm -hmm. kind of lean back to the old times because it's what they know. But they exactly they don't know what freedom will bring. Exactly. Uh, let me go to Sahar. Sahar, there is a lot of maybe mistrust or distrust, distrust among many Egyptians. Some of those supporting the Morsi. Uh, uh, party and that aspect of the political scene, and then some who started the revolution um, towards the army and the role the army plays today in politics and even previously. Mm -hmm. When you look to the future, do you yourself trust the army? Do you see that the army eventually will do the right thing for the Egyptian people? Apart from the constitution, the army is responsible to protect the country and the constitution. Mm -hmm. And I think they did that on 2011, or January 2011, and they did it again in June 30, 2013. Yeah. So the army doing this part, but to put army in charge, I disagree about mm -hmm. it. But this is uh, a power to be used when it is needed. It is not to be in charge. Mm -hmm. The char in charge people, I prefer some democratic system uh, with presidency limited term, mm -hmm. four years, eight years, or whatever it is. They agree about it. Yes. And uh, because stay longer, the worst it comes. Sure. And uh, having any politician or executive a long time in place always create get corrupted after a while. Yes. So always we need new blood to go to the surface. Mm -hmm. So it will be a continued healthy country. Awesome. Then the main problems inside Egypt is the education of the poor layers. Yes. This, if you can solve this problem, that would be a major mm -hmm. achievement. Yeah. Nancy, what, what's your view? Are you, do you trust the army? I do trust the military. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a country, I mean, it's really, really interesting. This is a country where the people uh, are in love with their army. You know, it's like every family in Egypt has one or two members at least, you know, per generation. Yes. You know, uh, every family is yes. part of it. So they don't think of the army as something, separ as something separate. Mm -hmm. It's trustworthy. It's, um, I'd like to add, it's not the having one or two members of the family in the army. But they have one or two members martyred. Yes, that, martyred, of yes, course, yes, yes yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, so so um, I do trust the army, and I also want to say they have no other choice mm -hmm. but to actually put the country back on track. And I think this is what they realized. So it's in their best interest. It's, it, it's in the army's, it's in the military's best interest mm -hmm. for civilians to take charge of, of uh, the country. Yes. Uh, because otherwise it's not going to scale, and they realize that. Uh, and you can see it in the difference in approaches and, and, and styles and everything uh, in the leadership of the current um, uh, the current leadership yes. of the army or yes. of the military versus yes. the previous one under uh, Moshir 
uh, Tantawi. Yes. So uh, I, I believe that they sincerely want to put the country on track. Mm -hmm. Just exactly which track? Uh, see, that's the thing. Yes. Is it the old track but move forward? Mm -hmm. Or is it the new track? That's the thing that is currently being clarified, but I do believe that they are thinking of a new track. Got it. Let uh, us Sahar. compare between old track and the new track. I like this. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, Egypt's track is long and very historic. Mm -hmm. And we have good pumps in it and the bad people and the good people. And we are up and down as any country in the whole world. Mm -hmm. uh, now the past track they got corrupted. It started good, mm -hmm. but got corrupted. So let us learn from our own mistakes. And let us guide these people to avoid this corruption. Mm -hmm. And we have enough educated people in Egypt that can lead in this direction. Yeah. Yeah. I, Egyptian is intelligent. I give them a lot of trust. Yes. And uh, they can lead it to a good place. Yes. I, I want to sort of take you a bit deeper into the discussion today. The, in the news, they basically, um, one of the authorities in Egypt announced that about 726 people died when the army and the Ministry of the Interior cleared the sit-ins in Cairo uh, that were basically sort of the remnants of what happened after the June uh, 30th event. Do you think the military and the security forces handled the situation correctly? Could there have been any other option for them to handle the situation? Is it worth the cost, essentially? Uh, in your view, in your viewpoint, it was unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and it was expected. Uh, I can't ever uh, condone something uh, that that results in in bloodshed. But I have to clarify mm -hmm. that throughout 45 days after the ousting of uh, ex-president Morsi, that uh, the civilian forces or the civilian political uh, uh, forces as well as the military tried to be inclusive. Yes. And I think it was, I'm um, not think, actually I know that uh, the Islamists uh, or the politi political Islamists uh, were the ones that actually refused this inclusion. And they did the sit-ins and uh, the country tolerated the sit-ins uh, for 45 days to levels that I don't think are legal in any country, mm -hmm. you know, uh, where uh, public, pro public and private property were destroyed. Um, uh, uh, people like in the neighborhoods where the sit-ins uh, took, uh, took place uh, could not have a reasonable uh, 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 sleep, you know, yes. uh, and so on. So it it was very, un it, it was an inconvenience to everyone. Yes. And given that they refused to become party, uh, you know, the, the 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 political process and and moving forward. Yes. And, uh, and become partners with. They were offered the partnership, but they, you know, uh, uh, denied or they refused it. Refused it. Yes. Right. Um, before the sit-ins, ample uh, warnings have been issued. And by religious clerics as well as by the military and yes. the uh, Ministry of Interior. And on the day of breaking down the, the or, or ending the sit-ins, uh, a path was open, you know, like a, a safety path was open for, for people to leave, to leave yes. safely and yeah. to, you know, and peacefully with, with actual transportation to where they came from, from the different states or governorates is, is what we call it, uh, yes. in Egypt. Uh, and some refused, you know, the majority decided to leave, but some refused, and, and those are the casualties. And unfortunately, most of them are just, um, you know, uh, they are a mix of people that really believe in the cause. Yes. And others, others who are very uh, unfortunate, very poor. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, uh, they receive free food, free, you know, um, they came Shelter. for benefits. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you know, some there was benefit for uh, yes. there were benefits for that. Yes. So it's unfortunate. It, but it is. It is. Yeah. It is, and and hopefully um, uh, violence subsides and um, Egyptians don't le lose other lives. Let me go to Sarah. Just right after mm -hmm. those sit-ins were yeah. cleared, um, a number of churches were set on fire in different parts of Egypt. 
I think the number about 85 churches or something like Se that. 73. Yeah. Or 73. 70 something. Or 73 yeah. something like this. Yeah. What, what was it, your read on into that? It is very hard and very painful to see your church or your mosque or your temple got burning. Mm -hmm. Even very hard to see your jacket got burned. Yes. Mm -hmm. For what? For somebody wants to prove his the point of view for something. This people is not part of it. Mm -hmm. Church is not part of it. So, uh, because mo most churches, or all churches in general, they never carry weapons from any kind. Yes. They count on the government for defense. To, to defend them, yeah. To defend them. Yeah. So that is the weak or the soft side. Yeah. So you're using the guns you have to, on the weak side, to prove what? To pressure on the government? Mm -hmm. That is not, does not make sense for me. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, some of these churches is very historic. Yes. It is built in the third century. Yeah. This building cannot be replaced. Mm -hmm. has no price. Yeah. It's priceless. Do, do you think the Ministry of the Interior was um, perhaps not well planned, given the fact that um, the sit-ins, everybody knew they were going to clear them, that there could be retaliatory actions? by these groups that For perhaps... For sure, Ministry of Interior, they know about it. Yes. But for the defense of the Ministry of Interior, mm -hmm. they got attacked police centers. Mm -hmm. So the Ministry of Interior itself was a victim too. Right, right. So these people have got out of control. That in normal circumstances, yes. attacking the attacking police every, is not yeah. something that you see yeah. happening every day. It's still happening every day. Yeah. yeah. And uh, as Pop Toadros said, the, Pope Alexandria said, burning 73 churches or 80 churches is price for the democracy, and I'm happy to pay it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's good that you ended with that, and um, when you think about um, the advice that you want to give, whether to the current administration, if we really look at the presidential powers that exist, you have a cabinet in place, you also have the military and the police forces, and you know that there are demonstrations happening almost every day or every week. What should be the approach that these forces should take going forward in, with these demonstrations? I mean, how do you think they are handling them? Uh, they can do better. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I think they can start with having a balanced media to begin with so that these people can have a voice mm -hmm. in the media instead of always taking to the street. And, and not just taking to the street where they just demonstrate, you know, and, and, and that would be it. They actually do other things like uh, try to do sit-ins in the subway or on highways or things like that. So I, I think that the current administration in Egypt can do a better job in terms of, uh, by using a more balanced media, by being more open and transparent with respect to um, viol uh, incidents of violence or allegations yes. of uh, abuse and so on. Um, a lot of cultural restructuring within the institutions of the country have to take place and it yes. has to start in um, the Ministry of Interior, uh, as Absolutely. well as you know some some branches of the army, uh, where human rights and dignity become the norm, you know, and they Respected, start yeah. and respect for for the individual. So um, they can do better, Good. and and I hope that they do. I hope so too. So with that, what we what we're going to do is we're going to take another break, and when we come back, we're we're, we're basically ask our guests a number of questions specifically focused on the economic situation in Egypt and how they see that aspect also uh, and where the improvements need to be made. So we, we will be right back. Welcome back to the Egyptian Update. Um, as I mentioned right before the break, we will actually be taking a look at the economic uh, conditions in Egypt today. And then from that discussion, we'll start taking a look at the American-Egyptian relationship um, and see what our guests um, have to uh, say about how this relationship is today and where it should be going forward. So with that, uh, let me uh, come back here to uh, Nancy. Um, 
Definitely, in my opinion at least, the economic situation, whether it's during Mubarak's time or Morsi's time or today, is not that different if we really think about the average citizen in Egypt. In some, a lot of Egyptians actually will argue that it has gotten drastically worse. What is your view on the economic situation today? What is causing the issues and the problems in Egypt today? I hear that Egypt has borrowed a lot more money than it has typically done historically um, in, in Morsi's time and also today. So what do you see happening economically in Egypt today? Uh, it's, it's a tough situation for any, it's a, tall, it's a tough situation and a tall order for any government really. So the economic situation in Egypt is, while there's a huge potential seriously for, for investments and for return on investment, but uh, the, some of the basics uh, are missing. What we're seeing uh, really right now is that all the small bubbles that were created previously in the Mubarak era um, have burst. Mm -hmm. So now people see the reality. You find people that are uh, living at um, uh, amazing uh, levels of riches, things that we probably Above the would, clouds, not, yeah. we <laughs> would not be able to afford here yes. uh, in this country working as hard as we do. Yes. Uh, and you will find people living at standards that no human being should be left to endure yes. or to live under. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking at or what Egypt is experiencing right now is the burst of all bubbles and mm -hmm. everybody now sees everything. Interesting. Okay, so, yeah. so uh, it's the reality of things because in 30 years, 30 years of uh, Mubarak's rule, countries such as India and China and South Korea have started and sprinted and grown huge economies with impressive uh, GDPs or growth in, in, in GDPs and so on. Yes. And in those same 30 years, you know, nothing big happened in Egypt. Mm -hmm. So the economy um, right now is basically just the reality of things. Um, and what, what adds uh, to the misery or insult to injury is that one of the biggest sources of income to Egypt is uh, the, through tourism. Tourism. Industry. And tourism depends on uh, the security mm -hmm. in the street and yes. the safety and uh, you know, the infrastructure. All of these things are currently, um, are not at a optimal levels. Yes. So the easy money that comes from tourism or a currency that comes from tourism is not even there, which is yes. exacerbating the pains that Egypt is going through. Mm -hmm. So um, when you look at the Egyptian uh, society, uh, a, a, a decent percentage uh, is educated. Uh, uh, they are quite intelligent, uh, but there is a, a, a gap between what the uh, market demands and what the skill set mm -hmm. provided yes. through the uh, system of education provides. So mm -hmm. there's a huge gap. Yes. Uh, that gap is not something that started after the revolution or started during or, or continued during Morsi. It has, existed for a it long has time. always existed. It's just now people are seeing it and seeing the disparity and all that. Mm -hmm. So um, the current economic condition is is not good. Okay? The potential for growth and for um, a, a great return on investment is is significant. But the problems of security and stability will be key for any economic development. Okay. Seher, you talk to people over there, family members and friends. What are you hearing? Security is number one factor, as she mentioned. Mm -hmm. It is very important for investors, for tourists, for any industry to be established. Yes. Uh, security, I'm not talking about eight to five, but has to be around the clock. Mm -hmm. Security is that I can drive or go from A to B safe. Security is that I can I leave my daughter go night time without uh, somebody guarding her. Yes. So security in different level is very, very important and I'm happy that she talked about it this yes. way. As resources in Egypt, Egypt is not really in bad shape, no. They have a lot of resources, reasonable resources. Uh, education, which is uh, the uneducated people, is keep increasing. Mm -hmm. The number of 
college graduation in Egypt, if you know this, the highest college percentage in the whole world mm. is in Egypt. College graduates. Co college graduate. Mm -hmm. So the middle class is disappeared. Mm -hmm. So we have college graduate, and we have non-educated group, mm -hmm. and a very thin layer in the middle, mm -hmm. which is the technician layer, which it could be the opposite. It could be the, the majority there yes. to do the job. Mm -hmm. To pull more uh, tourists to Egypt, you need security, you need safety, and uh, somehow I heard from one of them, who was so happy, we killed the tourists in Egypt. Why are you happy? Yes. Who will eat out of it? Of course, yeah. There is a lot of people, a lot of working layers, mm -hmm. they benefit out of it. Depend but he was happy tourism. that he killed this tourist uh, yeah. in Egypt. Yeah. Uh, other than that, make, make it demand of the market. The demand is too much. Yeah. And the investors are so smart to realize this, yeah. and they can build it. But they need some time, they need technical support, they need some education, which can be imported from, or helped by United States, or by European countries. Mm -hmm. So we can create good Egypt. But is uh, this country is willing to help or not? Yeah. Yeah. So and, and actually, that, that's a very good segue for us because I want to shift our discussion over to how you see the U.S. government interacting with the Egyptian situation. Of course, the U.S. history with Egypt goes back many decades ago. Today, Senator John McCain today actually said that the, the U.S. has no strategy in Egypt uh, and that he was um, uh, uh, very dismayed with... Uh, S Secretary John Kerry's performance in this particular area. Um, do you agree with John McCain? What's your read on how the U.S. government has handled the Egyptian situation since you know the end of Mubarak's regime until today? What? How do you how do you see that uh, situation? I feel so sorry for the uh, U.S. administration. I really do. Unfortunately, uh, the U.S. is in the unfortunate situation where uh, it is damned if, if it did anything and damned if it didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and that's because the core issues uh, are always ignored by any foreign policy that the U.S. Uh, that any U.S. administration forges. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I disagree with Senator McCain mm -hmm. uh, with respect to uh, the the uh, I, I, with uh, with respect to his assessment yes. of the foreign policy. The U.S. foreign policy in Egypt is not you know that there is no. Uh, I think it's t starting to take uh, the, the the right direction, mm -hmm. which is. Um, making peace with and acknowledging the power of the Egyptian people as yes. opposed to the power of the regime. Yes. Um, I, I think that the U.S. administration was tricked mm -hmm. in the early, by the earlier, you know, temporary, short-lived regime, thinking that it was a true reflection of the whole society. You're referring to the MB administration. Exactly, with yes. exactly. I think, yeah. I think, you know, yeah. they, they placed a bet uh, that using democratic instruments such as election, it will re really be reflective, yes. right? Uh, but again, if we we cannot um, we cannot limit democracy to just an election box. It cannot be that. Democracy is more than that. Democracy has frameworks. There's a, 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 constitu a fair constitution. Mm -hmm. Constitution, yeah. Uh, that, that prohibits uh, discrimination based on anything, gender, race, uh, 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 religion, whatever. Yes. Uh, so it takes more, really, to, but, but, you know, be that as it may, the U.S., because yes. it's what, what, what we do here, it's yeah. what we do here. Yeah. This is the elected, uh, these are the elected officials, and therefore they must be reflecting the people's will. Correct. And it went along in that area, not realizing or realizing, but not knowing what to do, yes. that there was some significant issues. Yeah. There were some significant issues. And I think uh, 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 President Obama uh, reflected that in his speech in the United Nations. Correct. Uh, he touched on it, and he touched on it correctly. Yes. Uh, his stance uh, with respect to the Syrian issue, yes. even though 
this is Syria and this is Egypt and they're not related. No, 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 they are very, very related mm -hmm. because traditionally Syria is the eastern border of Egypt, e even though not geographically, yes. but strategically and militarily, you know, the safety of Egypt starts in Syria. Yeah, and this is why it's, it's uh, this has been since the pharaohs, by the yes. way. Uh, uh, so uh, I, I think that they are starting to go in the right direction, mm -hmm. but they're not going about it clearly enough uh, or, uh, or addressing the core issue that, um, that breeds this animosity, you know, towards any U.S. administration. Absolutely. And if we must address it, we must, if we must say what that is, that's the Arab-Israeli uh, conflict. Correct. Uh, if, if we as Americans are going to be the uh, mediator and the judge and jury, yes. then our foreign policy has to uh, be forged such that it respects international laws, uh, decisions by the United Nations, yes. um, uh, treaties, international treaties, and act accordingly, effectively reaching an agreement that probably will not be optimal to everyone. To everybody. You know, yeah. and that's the point where you know it's probably fair. Correct. Right, and it is at that point if the U if any U.S. administration manages to do this, then it will have forged a real relationship at a street level, as opposed to. A regime level. Yes. And if this happens, then you have pretty much 300 million out of the 350 million in the Middle East starting to see the U.S. as a real friend as opposed to an imperial power. Yes. Because that region, you know, the history is full of imperialism, yeah. right? And imperialistic experiences to the point where people are borderline xenophobic. They are scared of anyone who is foreign. Yeah. So building trust starts at um, A, you know, three things, yes. three, if I may. Sure, <laughs> sure. Uh, three things. The first thing is uh, recognizing the core issue, which mm -hmm. is the Arab-Israeli conflict and which we just described. The yes. second thing is um, uh, realizing, you know, like uh, acknowledging the power of the people, right? And the foreign policy that actually is is fair yes. and quite balanced, or mm -hmm. you know, and uh, realizing that Egypt um, is too big to fail as well, mm -hmm. because if we manage to help Egypt do this transition and do it correctly and fairly, you know, then we have actually helped the entire Middle East and the entire Arab world. To, to uh, see it as an to example. To see it, exactly. Yes. You know, then it's a real spring as opposed to whatever is going on right now. Yeah. So, so Sahar, when you hear Nancy look at it from the standpoint of looking at what, what the Egyptian people want, when you think about the American foreign policy as an American Egyptian, what would you like the U.S. to try to support in Egypt? I mean, what is the best outcome? An Islamist government with a democratic support? a civil state, what do you think is the best outcome from the U.S. interest view? Uh, first, the source of information to the United States is, was not clear at all in the beginning. Mm -hmm. They got misled information. Mm -hmm. So they push them in the wrong direction. That's Where do you think, the, what, what do you think the source of information were? Do you uh, think it's, you're mainly talking about the embassy in Cairo or? No, they're not, not embassy in Cairo. Mm -hmm. It is their source of information through the media. Okay. It was completely wrong. Mm -hmm. I was a little bit aggressive, and I sent to one of the senators email yes. asking or explaining that what happened is not a coup. And the answer was really weird answer. He said, I worry about how Egyptians treat Morsi. Who cares about Morsi? Yeah, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's his answer. He cares mm -hmm. about Morsi much more than anything else. Yes. So that means he, er, his train of thought is in the wrong direction. Yes. Well, that actually brings a good point because there's a, there's a lot to be said about PR campaigns, whether these PR campaigns are funded by the Muslim Brotherhood or funded by the existing Egyptian administration today. Where do you think the U.S. should really get its information or from its own vantage point, what sort, what kind of Egypt should the U.S. aspire to see? 
Well, I, I want to take a couple steps back because sure. I hope to God that the media is not the source of the U.S. I, 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 <laughs> I hope so, too. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 I, I think that the analysis of the data yes. that, you know, I, I'm sure that the, the, you know, the administration has more than ample uh, uh, sources of, uh, of yeah, data, of course, of course. not quite information, data. Exactly. It's analyzing that data that creates information. Yes. So I am curious mm. about the analysis that mm. get applied to that data because that's what supports the decisions, the decisions that, exactly. you know, that, that get made. Yes. So I, I think that perhaps the analyses are following old algorithms, I would mm. say, you know, if I, sorry, yes. can't can escape technology I don't, here, no, no, but. <laughs> I don't like to put an analysis only, because I know it's one of the international stations, no name, mm -hmm. yes. wrote same things, completely reversed it 180 degrees. Mm -hmm. So I pick up the phone and I called their headquarters. Oh, yes. wow, okay. Very good. Uh -huh. Okay, but the answer was, our representative in Egypt told us this information. I told them your representative in Egypt to give you wrong information. Okay, okay. So what I hear it from Egyptian radio, from my relative in Egypt, yes. is completely opposite for what you're publishing. Yes. In this case, I have to lose trust in your station. Sure, sure. Uh, you, you both make, make very good points, and I, I personally, uh, from uh, an American-Egyptian uh, strategic alliance standpoint, what I think is best for the U.S. is to really create, is to really support a civil state in Egypt because, again, we believe that uh, Islamist or religious groupings in Cairo will definitely mess up uh, the scene, especially in an area where religious uh, affiliations Mixing could really make a big problem. politics with religion is very bad. Ex does exactly. Give, does not give you a good result. Exactly. I mean, we see it in yes. Europe and yes. in the Western yes. world. They only moved out of the dark ages mm -hmm. when they separated the, the powers of church and state. Yes. Exactly. So yes. church not being just Christian, it's just religion and, and state. No. And running the and, state. Yes. Here, even the mosques, you call it church. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Well, I really want to, just because we're running out of time, I really want to express my gratitude for your time. Nancy, for, for joining us, and also uh, Saher, I want to thank you very much. And thank hopefully you. we come here again and uh, share more of an update on what's happening in Egypt. I know it's a journey and it's going to take time. So I want to thank you for uh, watching us and listening to this discussion. And uh, hope to see you soon. Thank Th you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank okay. you.